Hello, everybody. We are back with um, another round of the Urizen Gauntlet, where he makes his uh, desperate attempt to go through the demon world after whatever wins or losses he has incurred uh, for the purpose of acquiring the fruit. Wait, or I, I, I have to ask this question right now. Did I have my camera on for the last time we did this video, or no? Uh, I don't think so. You okay. can put it on if you want. No, no, no. It's because it's it's the video starts with like, my camera on and I just realized, wait, why is that there? I mean, you can, you can give it all you want, but I, I don't really care. Well, we'll just, we'll, here, let me, I'm just going to hire, I'm just going to increase it real quickly and I'm just going to remove it for now. There's no reason to keep it here for now. While he's doing that, I would like to point this out and we're going to do this now when we do the gauntlet videos because we still explain this in the video. I figure it's a better idea to put, talk about it now. Again, for clarification, this is an equalized matchup between Yurizen's forces and his generals and Argosax's. If this were in lore accurate, Yurizen and his generals would sweep everyone, pretty much everyone in this like in this gauntlet. Well, I, I don't know about his generals per se, but like Yurizen, well, well, he, he for sure would kill everyone. Yes, that that's not that's not for debate. That's not up for debate. This is if they were put this alternate timeline where they're all somehow the same strength, just so we can have like the discussion. Who would win? Just on sheer ability, experience, resistance is one. And unfortunately, yours have decided to come back from the Dragon Ball universe because, uh, as you'll see going forward, uh, he has nothing to offer. I guess. I guess the scenario is that he just finished killing Abigail because Abigail kind of sucks a little. Um, and well, Argos Oh yeah, yeah, we, we did agree yeah. that Abigail loses. Yeah, he he finished defeating Abigail, gets miraculously <laughs> restored along with all of his generals, and then Argos shows up and is like, "Hey, I take issue with you existing, so now we're gonna have uh, a fight." Now um, we're gonna throw hands here, young man, and we're gonna see so who comes out on top. We we didn't have enough like demons, <laughs> at least notable demons that we could use for Argos X, so we're just going to be doing like generals and um well so to, to clarify there while dmc2 yeah. does have a massive roster of demons to call upon the problem is that we're not really quite so we're, we gave we gave urizen all the things related to the tree and things that he directly brought but we have no clue what the fuck belongs to Argos X, minor demon wise <laughs> so many demons just show up there because they have a convenient excuse to be there then and there's then, things like, like the agnophytus where it's just like you're just a corpse that like rotted inside of a cage <laughs> and then you don't know like which yeah. ones actually like are just for arias or whatever shit like that then there are stuff that's just like yeah it was just created by the Ouroboros corporation we don't know if that was used specifically for Argus Echo's revival if those were like pet projects he was working on there's a lot of details we don't know so, um, uh, for his generals, we well, for years and generals, they're going to stay the same no matter what. You know, uh, King Cerberus, uh, Cavalier Angelo with the uh, Garion Knight, Malthus, and uh, Artemis. And then, obviously, yours and two. Now, for the Argosax's forces, we have Bulwark, as he is one of his uh, top henchmen. I believe he's also stated to be like one of his uh, his right hands. Balrog, who is confirmed by Before the Nightmare to be his left hand man. Um, Tries Magica, who is one of the uh, the three oracles that showed during uh, DMC two, and then possessed Arius because he's just like literally trying to be a servant of Argus X at the time, or is at least trying to take over his power. But at this point, he's been possessed directly by uh, Argus X's power. We will explain later why. I guess we can explain now. There's like another humanity faction that we're going to be talking about that uses normal Arius, which is why we're using possessed Arius here. Yeah, and to be fair, like I'll just be perfectly frank. If we're using no, if we were using normal Arius, then like it would just be a sweep all across the board. Yeah, normal Arius is has a lot of broken abilities. So for Argosax, technically we can do two rounds if you want to. We can do Blob, and then we can do Despair. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I, don't, I don't really think it's gonna be necessary to do two rounds. I mean, we'll, we'll do, we can do it if you want, but like I don't think it's gonna be necessary. So, uh, you guys are gonna okay. notice a key theme here, at least when it comes to the Demon Kings. That well, actually, he is the last Demon King. Uh, so. Yeah. So there's a lot of power creep among the Demon Kings. You're either complete garbage or you're amazing. <laughs> like, you're, 
there is not like there's no such thing as like a mid tier demon king. There's you have all the powers and abilities of everything, or you can just like shoot some spikes out of the ground. <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, no, yeah, you either you're either just yeah. you're in the club or you're not. That's really how it feels. I noticed the thing among this other stacks and yours is that they all have powers of like their generals or the people that they have. We'll get into that later. So first, r first round for the generals, I guess. Um, I'm trying to remember how we did this uh, initially. I think we just picked like. So we just picked. A character. So yeah, we just picked a character. Hang on. Got Do you me. want to pick one on Argusax's side and have them go through Urizens or the other way around? Hang on, how to respond to a message uh, from Osric. Um. Well. Okay, so we've already introduced the crew uh, last in the last couple of videos, so I guess we'll start with the, with the Argus Axis general and work our way up. Uh, mm. Let's get probably the one most people don't know out of the way, Balrog. Yeah, so Balrog, uh, Balrog shows up in Before the Nightmare. Basically, he's like a fire demon that conquered the and ruled the fire hell after Burial died, after the events of DMC4. So just to um, clarify, yes, we are referring to the gauntlet Dante uses in DMC5. For those of you who don't know him before Nightmare, he was actually Argosax's uh, right-hand man, or at least general, uh, at some point, apparently. Yeah, during, we, we know this, like, during the, um, the time that he was invading the human world, even after he was sealed away, he also was. Um, and technically, we're gonna we're gonna count it for that that he was under Argosax's employment, even though he was technically trying to betray him during the events of two, and Dante just killed him before he got the opportunity. <laughs> He's technically under Argosax's forces, so for all intents and purposes, he gets to be included. Um, his powers just kind of consist of like punching things and having like tons of hellfire. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, uh, so, gets, so just to be clear, we are not giving him the Yamato we're shard. We're not giving him the shard of Yamato. I feel, Yamato. I feel like you were trying to nerf Argosax's forces a little bit. Um, all that really gives him is the ability to like block any attack for a limited period of time that comes into contact with his fists. I mean, I guess that does make a difference. I was gonna say that, that does do something. To be fair, so he gets to fight Artemis first. Okay, so how, in an equal... How actually is, agile is he? Like, how, what's his mobility looking like? He... Dante does jump... Jumps around him a bunch. He's not, like, super slow. But, like... We kind of we kind of have to assume, to a degree, that his mobility is equivalent to the powers and abilities demonstrated by the Balrog Gauntlets. Because, like, when, when Dante gets them, he literally has access to, like, the kick mode and the blow mode already. So he already has the ability to do Kapora and, like, boxing. So we have to assume to a certain degree that Balrog has, like, pretty considerable martial arts skills and movement adjacent to what's represented in 5. Because all the all the devil arms are just the souls and the pure embodiments of demons, representing their purest capabilities and their powers. So, so you want to give Balrog's moveset to Balrog? Yeah, because it, would, it wouldn't it would make sense for him not to have those abilities when all the other bosses have the powers and abilities in their devil arms. There'd right. be no reason for him to be any different. Alright, that's fair. I can, I can so, in a close quarters combat, he's probably going to punch Artemis into the ground. Uh, I just think there's a bit of a problem. Artemis is a flying target that has homing projectiles and tons of like overhead attacks and can just keep flying away. I'm trying to remember if Balrog has any projectiles. Uh, here, let me. I can. I can look it up real quickly. I don't think so. I know he has parry options, so he could just sit there and parry well, all the projectiles. Can you parry away. Artemis's uh attacks? Uh, I think so. Yeah. If your if your uh, ignition is high enough, which we would assume it is, because he always is able to summon the Hellfire regardless. Yeah, it lets an impulse of Balrog's overheated energy temporarily increasing your attacks. So that should be fair game. Yeah, so he'll have great defensive capabilities and close quarters offensive capabilities. The problem is, is like whether or not he can close well, the gap. He also has really good... If we take Dante's usage into account, uh, he also has really good dodging in close quarters. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, like, what if Artemis just decides to camp him? Honestly, like, he could probably okay? dodge until he gets close enough. 
Also, he has updraft as well, which appears. No, oh, so that's backwards. Does he not have fucking um? Does he not have the um... wait? Wait, no. I think I think he probably takes this thing because Artemis does do dive bombs. All he has to wait for her to do is do one dive bomb, and he can just uppercut her. Oh, he also has rolling blaze too. Yeah, rolling blaze is well. Is it actually called rolling blaze in game? Uh, there is a rolling blaze here. Jumping discharge is a blast wave that damages yeah. nearby enemies. Yeah, he has rolling blaze. They usually name it something different for each game, but uh, yeah, rolling blaze for those who are unfamiliar is the jump attack for the gauntlet weapons. Uh, just like in all the other games, it should have the ability to deflect projectiles, and it's just an active, like massive hitbox. In this case, it's basically Ifrit's jump, so he can just he can jump and always be protected. He can also just uppercut her when, because he'll he'll have enough time to dodge most of her attacks, plus all of her light projectiles that shoot from the air, like her acid rain stuff, um, shoots a circle on the ground that indicates where it's going to land. Um, Very highly telegraphed. Yeah, there's also the the fact that her her light her light turrets, which are really good, the ones that she lays, like the portals that she lays on the ground that shoot out a light beam. They're very obvious to see. They have a wind-up, they take a couple seconds to come out, and they shoot a laser from side to side. He's going to see that and just be like, oh, I have to dodge. Yeah, have to, like, this is not going to be way. like a hidden fucking technique or a hidden move that he's going to have trouble yeah, seeing. Um, so he'll just be able to move. He'll, he'll be completely fine for all intents and purposes. And Artemis, when Artemis gets like frustrated or further into the fight, typically does do dive bombs. Or she'll she'll like air raid you down the middle of the uh, the uh, the arena. She'll come running in in a charge attack. He could just uppercut her, or like grab her and suplex her onto the ground, or just start like going to town on like her uh, her arms or legs to prevent to disable her flight capabilities, or literally anything. Honestly, like it's only going to take a couple exchanges before he could just start like breaking parts of her body off. This is really just a situation that the second he gets close range is the second he wins. There's also the fact that, like, I mean, we're using... We use Nero as an example here. Uh, Nero... I don't know if we mentioned this in the last one. Well, actually, no. We, we didn't get an opportunity. Nero's... For those of you who don't know, Nero's Red Queen flames are confirmed to be, like, in before the... Not before the Nightmare. <clears throat> Deadly Fortune, DMC4's novel, are confirmed to be as hot as the Hellfire from Burial. And that's when their max acted. Granted, the ones in 5 would be stronger, but this effectively means Bear Balrog is running with both Hotter Flames and Burial and Nero's Red Queen during 4. So, since Nero... Even if we don't know like the specific interaction that like um, Artemis herself was capable of uh, dealing with, we don't have any feats that she has like significant fire resistance, especially against the King of the Fire Hell. Or so, more accurately, the better thing. <laughs> yeah, the better. So th there's a good argument to be made that she, he could just set her ablaze uh, as soon as he makes contact with her. Um, yeah, so I, I think Balrog takes this pretty handily. Sounds about right. I don't know why I put him at the bottom if we were going to talk about him first. Well, to be fair, uh, I don't think we were expecting to talk about him first. We're just kind of like in the tea at the moment. We're just like, oh, yeah, why not? Let's do this first. So, uh, we'll get the next season out of the way, Malthus. Balrog. Not even gonna, not even gonna discuss this one. Yeah. Her, we'll, she's we'll the, she's trash. She's, she's the free spot for most generals. She, just, she, she can portal hop, but, like, he can punch through the portals. She has projectiles, but they're really slow, and they track, like, trash. ass. And he can, he can just kind of punch them. Uh, her big technique is jumping through her portals and landing with like a decent amount of time to punish and just rushing at you when getting like really angry. And Balrog should be roughly the same oh. size. If not as bigger. Her, if not bigger. So he's just gonna pick her up and just start punching the crap out of Malthus. So like the only advantage that was had in Artemis's case that allowed her to dodge a lot of Balrog's attacks is completely gone now and replaced with portals that aren't even like good, like one-sided broken portals where it's like, hey, hey, I get to interact with you, but you don't get to interact with me. Like that's not even true. Yeah, so, so Malphus just not gonna not doing much here once once again, Malphus. 
Uh, the oh. next one is um, King Servers. You want to do King Servers first? Yeah. So I think for the first part, this. So for the first part with the Flame Cerberus, I think Flame Cerberus is not going to do very well against Balrog. Because while we have statements that Flame Cerberus is like, even Burial trembles before his flames, he trembles before Balrog's flames too. So like, that doesn't, doesn't really mean anything. Like we're talking about the guy that's the king of the fire hell. So... Oh, like, again, the, the better king of the fire hell. So, so, so we're both arbitrarily hotter than Burial's flames. So this is effectively like a nothing burger fight. We can assume, or we can at least make the assertion that it, the fire's most likely not going to do shit to fire uh, King Cerberus. Like, he'll, he'll probably just cancel out the flames or like, it, it just like won't do anything to him. I think that's a fair... Now, like... what's, now what's going to be debatable here is if Balrog can get enough hit on King Cerberus while he's in fire mode to keep igniting his fire stronger and stronger and stronger by the time King Cerberus switches to lightning mode. Then after that point, it becomes a bit of a different fight, because now King Cerberus has multiple tracking projectiles that he can shoot out, and then he can camp the entire area in lightning. So it kind of depends on how good you think Balrog's like, ability to keep out off the ground uh, at certain points, because some of these attacks are pretty well telegraphed, but there are points where like, like King Cerberus basically has a better setup, has like Artemis' setup, but better. So depending on how he performs it, he could catch Balrog in a couple attacks. But this also depends on whether or not you think the first phase would do anything. Because if Balrog is able to get multiple hits in, he'll be fully charged in ignition by the time the second phase starts. And he'll just be doing so much more damage. He'll also be able to cancel out a decent chunk of like the Thundercloud stuff. Um, so I think like Lightning Cerberus will probably do it for a little bit. I think he'll be able to safely zone Balrog. Um, when we get when we get to the ice phase, that's um, that's where it gets interesting. Well, mm -hmm. uh, so like, are you are you gonna? Because I'll be honest, it, it sounds like we got the lightning one kind of like more or less covered. But it's like, is is the ice one really a factor? Do you think he'll be able to freeze Balrog's flames? Well, so so he makes he me seems to be under the impression that ice is like the mightiest power that he has. That it's significantly more powerful than ice. Fire and lightning. I think, like, we, we already have proof and examples of characters in DMC, like the Frost, that their ice is so thick they can't even be melted by volcanic fire. So I think it's possible that there is an ice that could be produced that can't even be melted by hellfire. And his ice is cold enough to cool the true form of the Clyphoth, or at least the true Clyphoth fruit. So. Lost me. It's possible you can make an argument it's just like the problem is is that if even if he froze him wouldn't balrog just ignite himself he would just be like ignite the flame now and just melt the ice maybe like just <laughs> it's really just not easy like set up here i'm just i i mean i know his his one gimmick is just getting stronger by hitting a bunch and then like setting himself on fire it's just i'm trying to give king servers the benefit of the doubt i thought you come on zim you're supposed to, you're supposed to rep king servers <laughs> help me out here well so well so here, here's the thing is like so if we assume his ice scales to the fire i think you can argue king servers can turn off the ignition just by virtue of it turning the ice cold around them because like the temperature is going to be way lower by default so you can probably just argue that Ignition's not going to work, but then at that point you have to question, is Balrog without Ignition not strong enough to fight King Cerberus? Or at least would it be able to... Because I, I have not read the fight in the novel, but if he can keep up with Dante, even partially skill-wise, he's going to be more skilled than any of these generals here. Well, so the thing is, is that he confirms in his fight with Dante that he was gaining strength and power after the after Argo Sax for like 10 years. So unlike most of these generals, he's actively getting stronger and making an attempt to become more powerful. So even if he's not training, we can assume he's internalizing the ability to gain more power through his demonic desire. So he's actively making an effort to become more of a threat. Whereas like King Cerberus is just kind of being a guard dog. 
Wow. You, you uh, sure? You sure? You sure you're not done spaying in his face yet? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, oh wait, I forgot to mention Sorbus's maneuverability. Yeah, th there's technically a possibility that, like, s even if he turns off ignition, if he burns himself out, he could just keep hitting. He could just keep dodging the icicles. And then just keep punching Cerberus's body and maneuvering around him. Because Cerberus does not have good maneuverability when he's turning, like, the rest of his body. Because he has to move his entire body just to, like, hit you once. So Balrog could probably just jump up on his back. Like, we're talking about a guy that's probably around the size of, like, Burial or Goliath. And you saw how maneuverable Goliath was, <laughs> even though he was a fucking klutz. Now, we're talking about a Goliath that can actually fight... I'm pretty sure that would just be, like, a behemoth that could, like, box and kick and do flips and stuff. He's probably going to be able to reliably get on King Cerberus's back or get around him or flank him and just keep punching his legs. Well, see, that, that's why I'm saying when it comes to fucking King Serp, when it comes to Balrog, it's like, even if we lose, for example, even if Balrog loses his actual fucking, um, his ignition, ignition. he's still going to be able to move around King Cerberus probably pretty easily. And don't get me wrong, I, I, King, I think King Cerberus is, like, really strong, and, you know, you know me, uh, the almighty Cerberus, but, <laughs> um, objectively, King Cerberus just has no real options here against a guy who can ignite himself on fire. I think he takes it, like, like, mid-low difficulty. Like, the lightning phase is gonna give him a little bit of trouble, and the ice phase might give him trouble for, like, one or two attacks. But after that, I think it's a clean fight. Because, like, clean one like for example, if King, like, if, we're, if Balrog had, like, ice element instead, then this would be in King Cerberus' favor. Because, like, I would assume the fire could fuck with oh, his eyes the same way, like... Well, like, we're going based on how the fight presents, like, King Cerberus starts in the fire phase. If he started in an ice mode against a fire user, he's getting melted. <laughs> And then electrocuted, so he's gonna have to go through two phases of elemental disadvantage before he gets in the home turf. So yeah, mm -hmm. unfortunately, King Cerberus just has one neutral, and then one negative, and then one another. One one like not effective, one neutral, and then like one that might be somewhat effective, but might not matter anyway. Yeah, re really not in a good position. <laughs> So then we got um, Cavalier Angelo with the Garion Knight. So does the Garion Knight even matter? <laughs> well, okay. So, so I, I guess the question I have to ask here is: Are we just going to give the resistances of Mundus Generals to to Argosaxes, or no? Would we give them to Dante? Because mm, cause here's the thing is that game so gameplay wise we can confirm Mundus's generals are immune to the time manipulation. We see that the Bengal of time doesn't work on them. That's not the case for DMC 2s characters, although it doesn't really mess with them as hard because I mean there, there, there's some shenanigans there. Like you could argue that like the god of the god of times amulet is just more superior to fucking Gary and just eating some random fucking. Just eating some random demonic energy. I think the god of time might be a little stronger there, but you know. Because like Garion got his powers, um, Garion got his powers just from being in the demon world yes. for a really long time. Whereas this, this god has always existed that way. So we we don't really have any details on like the time god that exists in DMC two. Um, you, would, you, would you just want to like assume that like maybe it's uh like it would just be a higher quality time stop? I'm willing to accept that just because it is being used on like demons under Argosax's control who are way some of them are way above Gen Mundus's generals. That is true. That is true. Especially considering like statements and stuff from the guidebook, even even the I think it's like the Fumataris. Is that it? Is that the, the Minotaur bowl thing? Yeah. That thing has a statement in the gut book that apparently um, it's, it's kind of indicated that or hinted that Dante goes devil trigger against this thing because of what the statement is mentioned. So like that that's that's already a way better statement than anything that DMC one's cast has forced Dante to do. Yeah. But th th thankfully, not not uh, thankfully an equalized matchup still nonetheless. But uh, 
fucking um I'm not really okay so if, if we're going to just give them the time stop resistance in general then once well in this particular case Cavalier might do something because it does give um uh, or not Cavalier uh Gary Knight it does give mobility options that just are not going to be accessible to freaking Bal uh Balrog. Yeah. So so in talking about Malthus we mentioned how our portal hopping is like not really useful completely different story for Garion because his doesn't involve opening a giant like doorway that you can punch your arm through and like rip something out from the other side. He just jumps through time and space. So he can just displace himself one moment and show up in the other. So even if even if Garion is a glorified meat shield, he's a meat shield on wheels. That is 100% more effective than a normal meat shield. That's yeah. even if we're like just giving I guess Balrog the time manipulation which you could or could not like I don't think it really matters for Garion's main utility here, which is just the movement options. Yeah, but if, if we can argue that, like, he, the time slow affects Balrog, we can argue then at that point that, like, uh, Garion oh, can help get Cavalier out of a lot of close situ let's, encounters. Let's be clear. If the time stop affects Balrog, it's over for Balrog. Because <laughs> Cavalier is going to drop lightning storm after lightning storm after lightning storm. Like... There's even a point where, like, honestly, if Cavalier wanted to, he could dismount from Garion and just have Garion fire, like, projectiles at him while he just goes over and, like, well, they just teleport blitz him the yeah. entire time. Not, not so, a situation where uh, things are going to go end well, at least for uh, Balrog, anyway. If we give him the time resistance, uh, Garion still has the mobility options. Garion's still good for, like, one strong meat shield. And then Cavalier still has his all of his grounded options, and it's still going to be more or less at full stamina. If we're... because most of the punishment he's going to take is going to hit Garion, he's going to have an opportunity to get off Garion while Garion's burning alive. <laughs> Dude, why do you hate Garion so much? I don't hate Garion. I'm just saying, like Garion is is basically going to be good for a meat shield. He'll be like, oh, my horse. Garion no. is Yoshi now. I will avenge you. Uh, I'm going to say it. If I, I think regardless of where the time manipulation works or not, I think Cavalier ultimately takes this because they're going to have way more options and they're actually competent fighters in close range. They don't have any of the problems fucking Eldegarian or not Eldegarian. They don't have any problems well, fucking King Cerberus so, has or Malthus. I think Balrog's probably a more experienced fighter. It's just the problem is he's he's lacking range because Cavalier's sword is. Well, can he teleport kind of. or no? Because, like, not, ignore, keep in mind that Cavalier can also teleport freely as well. And not only can Cavalier teleport, they can teleport mid-attack string. I <laughs> know. <laughs> because nobody in DMC, except for the Hell Vanguard and Cavalier, apparently figured out how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, well, we uh, have probably some of the most useful teleporting of any boss in DMC at this play here, except maybe, like, being by maybe Virgil. And he's got, like, he's also got, like, the same lightning, similar lightning projectiles to Cerberus, except, like, they're not slow, <laughs> uh, clunky, and easily telegraphed. They come from the sky and immediately hit you moments after they're shown. So he'll constantly force him to be on the move, and he can just, he can just catch him in the uh, medium step. Yeah. Just like slap uh, over the sword. Yeah, I, I have to be 100% honest here. I think uh, I think Cavalier takes this one against Balrog. I think Balrog could do some like heat up stuff and could probably get him in like maybe one move, but like it's gonna be really difficult. Well, He's we can't like, give him like real impact, impact or anything because that's Dante's moves. So like, what, well, so what's like the finisher can... move for Balrog here? I'm saying like we could give him like um, what's it called um. We can just give him, like, all of the kicking moves and whatnot. Like, he'd still have the option to, like, do some CQC. It's just, like, I think he's is really just going to come down to defensive options. And his parries are not going to work very well because only one of Cavalier's attacks actually is, like... Parryable? Yeah, and that's, like, the, the lightning blast that he shoots at the front. Cavalier consistently spams lightning from the top, like, vertically, rather than just shooting it in your face. So Cavalier doesn't have to attack you from the front. No, like, I mean, again, like, I think Cavalier just has more options on the table, has better Cavalier also options, is. and has more range because they have a fucking spear sword. He also has AoE as well. Like, he can just teleport next to him and just be like, and just shine up the entire area like a nightclub. 
So, if, if I'm gonna be honest, it, like the teleport is just what sold it for me at this point. <laughs> I mean, everything else is just uh, icing on the cake. Yeah, so uh, I would just say it's uh, mid same thing Cavalier for its mid low difficulty without Garion or Garion's not, abilities not being effective. If Garion's abilities work, it is easy difficulty, super easy. Like Barely. he just runs circles around. <laughs> it's a free space, freer than Malthus. <laughs> freer than Malthus, damn. Okay, so I think now we should go over Bulwark. He sweeps. He sweeps everything. <laughs> he sweeps. This isn't, a, this isn't a debate. So Bulwark, correct me if I'm wrong, he is teleporting, right? Yes, I believe he does. Here, let me check the wiki just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure he does. You're the one who played DLC 2. I, I know, and I do remember him teleporting, but I don't remember like how like actually like boss, like how the combat effective think, teleporting was. I think he teleports under the ground. Let me see. Oh, where are his powers and abilities? Not important. <laughs> For okay, let me look at mission sixteen. Uh, it just says he fights in a similar way to Nello Angelo. Oh, did they talk about him earlier on? Hang on. Dude, if that's true, then then well, like based off that statement, he already stomps most of Urizens. Because we saw what Nello did to to Urizens general. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm sorry if that's like that seems like an excuse yeah, to, to he does, assault he, people, but like he does teleport into a blue cloud and then comes down from above to attack you. Even without summon swords, Nello's mobility is just uh, crazy. He also has a spear that outranges. Well, in this case, he'd be fighting like Artemis first. So keep in mind, Bulwark also has like two wolves. Um, wolves that can just jump around and just cause like mayhem and annoyance. And can't uh, mind that canonically they can't actually hit their target. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike a game. They're like Nightmare, but in lore. So and they're so they're very fast. So even if you want to argue that like fucking um whatchamacallit, Artemis can actually dodge or keep themselves away from fucking um Bulwark, those wolves are gonna be able to like zone and like collapse on Artemis. They're not gonna be escaping this. Those encounter. wolves can also jump off of walls and whatnot. They can jump off the fucking like, air. Like they, they yeah, literally they can, can jump, jump off, off anything. The air and space. So they will literally chase you to the ends of the earth, and Bulwark can just like safely teleport around <laughs> and he'll be fine. So I, I think Artemis is essentially just gonna be on the run the entire fight. Every the moment she makes a single mistake, she's gonna get clipped. And then she's gonna get comboed to death. And if I recall, and I, I, I might be mistaken here, but I think Bulwark does have at least a one range projectile if he really wants to start splitting hairs. I think he also has, he this, also has, uh... Oh, no, 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 my apologies, it's not a range projectile. He extends the range of his fucking spear with an energy fucking sword the entire map distance. He also has a close <laughs> range reprisal where if you touch him, he can, he can extend, like, black spikes into your body. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, the, there's just he he just has like all the bases covered, and uh, he also I think can block as well. I think I remember he actually can block too. Yep, with that spear. He can block. So um, more than I can say for most demons. <laughs> uh, it's right off the bat. Uh, okay, so we're also gonna. I think he takes it with Artemis, especially with his like range increase he has, because again, it's like literally the entire fucking arena. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, I'll I'll say he takes it pretty easily. Malphis, uh, same problem. Bal Balrog basically beat her with almost no projectiles. Now we have a guy with projectiles and two AI companions that attack for free. Okay, King Cerberus. Um, um, oh, okay. this gets a little, so this gets a little trickier. So Fire Cerberus could potentially burn him. Oh, yeah, he's going to burn the bones, huh? You're going to burn a guy who's already burned alive? Here's the problem, is that Fire Cerberus is established in the la in the in the Mundus uh, video. Um, he does not gain any like projectile abilities as Fire Cerberus. All he does is attack you with his physical body. So he doesn't actually take advantage of his fire powers. Which means Bulwark will be able to run circles around him and poke his legs, his toes, his face, and then just obviously have the wolf jump off walls and just zone him. It's only until he gets into the lightning phase that he's going to be able to do any damage. 
and we're really just counting on him being durable enough to take multiple hits from a guy that's strong enough to damage him. <laughs> the lightning so, form's not going to do anything. Uh, <laughs> ice form. Yeah. If he's if he's alive by that point, then <laughs> he'll get one hit off. <laughs> I'm just uh, saying. Imagine the amount of hits that Balwa was inflicting on him. Now, now triple them. <laughs> so, so I don't know if he'll even survive to the ice state. If you want, <laughs> just in case someone asks, because I think there was actually a comment last video where someone asked, like, why couldn't, like, what about, like, he freezes nightmare? So, like, I guess just to clarify, if he could freeze Bulwark, um... Well, he'd have to freeze the wolves. Yeah. Because the wolves could just break him out. And to be fair, Bulwark can literally disintegrate and then come back. Like, after Dante beats him, he, like, explodes and then just comes back later. Yeah, like, he can literally reanimate all of his bones. He operates the same way like most, uh, like a lot of lesser demons do, where he can make like a new body for himself, and it's combat applicable too. So, I don't like. I don't think it's the end of the world if he gets frozen. Yeah, because he'd just be able to come back. Like this one, at least for sure, canonically has two lives. <laughs> at least. <laughs> it's also worth noting that his like even his wolves are literally reincarnated versions of his like former battle companions so i guess that segues into the last encounter cavalier okay so we now have uh animal <laughs> master versus animal master you're gonna you're gonna call um, the fucking the yoshi jumper an animal master <laughs> gary's been gary's been taking more hits than i've ever seen in these versus matchups <laughs> So, Garion will be able to affect the wolves with time manipulation, because we don't have any, like, basically any proof that they they would be, like, not affected by it. Bulwark is kind of in the same area as, like, Balrog. Well, actually, no, he might not be, because he actually fought against Sparta. Yeah, Bulwark actually has the, uh, probably the only non-demon king besides maybe, and I'm being generous here, maybe Beowulf. Beowulf. Who actually fought Sparta and technically walked away. <laughs> so, depending on how you take that, he should have enough demonic power alone. Well, I guess this is equalized, so we're just talking resistance. He should have enough resistance to resist the time stop. It's just like... The problem is, is that his wolves won't. And Garion can spam that and can also stack Quicksilver multiple times. So he's, he's going to notice his wolves are getting stuck in that, and he's going to have to attack Garion. Oh, 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 oh again? Years, like, again? Like, again? Like, that, like, that was going to be, like, that wasn't going to be an option? Like, peace was ever, like, Garion's survival was ever going to be an option in your mind? <laughs> no, Garion's going to get killed regardless. <laughs> That's always going to happen. Was there ever what? an outcome where Garion didn't die? I'll just ask. Well, <laughs> I think you could make an argument that Cavalier, if he's if he's careful, could take out one or two of the wolves by the time Garion gets killed while they're caught in the time manipulation. I'm gonna say, just, I'm gonna say in this case doesn't even matter. Wolf. I, I'm so gonna be my, a little, like, weird here, and I'm just gonna say, in this particular situation, I don't even think it matters if he could fucking kill any of the wolves because I, I don't think he can keep up with uh, fucking, um, I don't think he can keep up with fucking Bulwark. So you think Cavalier in a one-on-one -on -one with Bulwark would lose? I think absolutely, because, like, regardless, Bulwark does scale to Sparta's skill, and the only injury he has on his body is just the one of his eye. Well, I would say that the problem with him is that Cavalier is going to assume that he just has, like, short range based on the spear, and then he's going to jump back or reposition, and Bulwark's just going to shoot him from across the map. <laughs> With the spear. They're all like, you can't touch me from this distance. Let me just make my spear bigger one second. And then just like, I'll just teleport away. And then Bulwark follows him and is like, wait a minute, that's illegal. Nothing personal. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just gonna, have you ever seen the Fury, like, Virgil comic where they yeah, just, where they just tell, keep teleporting? Teleporting each other? That, that's, that's just gonna be like Bulwark and Cavalier if they're in a one on one. Yeah, I'm not really seeing an outcome here. <laughs> where fucking um, Cavalier can take it. Because Cavalier's skills aren't bad, but they're Trish's skills. And Trish doesn't compare Perfect. to the swordsmanship or ability of the actual Spartas. 
Unless you'd like to I think, disagree. Well, no, no. I was gonna say like unless you unless you basically take away like bull virtues, this is the time manipulation. I don't think there's any possibility for Cavalier winning this. Even if you do take away Bulwark's time manipulation, I can just argue for the fact that, okay, let's say Bulwark dies once, but he can just come back and be like, okay, time manipulation, bad. No. <laughs> Never <just> again. <laughs> well, it's also worth noting that like this isn't like a cross versions matchup where the DMC characters can't see time manipulation. They can all sense demonic energy, so he'll be able to see the time bubbles. Yeah, and like, you I'll can just literally like, just oh. fucking look at them. <laughs> He's just been like, oh, that's kind of annoying. Let me just keep my distance. Let me teleport out of those because if you're teleporting in the time bubble, you have all this. Ob obviously, it's a gameplay mechanic, but you have all this invincibility frame. Just be like, Freya, attack. <laughs> Fight me, <laughs> coward, here. <laughs> now. Okay, so I think Bulver. Just sweeps. Is, uh, yeah, he just has like uh, four on one. For his? Yeah, so cur currently right now, Balrog is taking home three wins, one loss. Oh, uh, you want to keep track this time? You want you want to keep track yeah. somewhere? Yeah, I will. I'll, okay, I'll, write, so, I'll write them down. So currently, Team Argosax has seven, and yes. uh, Beowulf, or fucking, um, fucking, yours has one. Keep in mind, the score total is going to be 12, to or not 12, it's going to be 16 tops, so it's already going pretty good for Team Argosax. But this is where things are going to get probably a little more balanced. Or uh, actually, yeah. no. Mm. Maybe. <laughs> Debatable. We'll talk about it. <laughs> so, his best Arius. So, basically, he's... This is a little bit different from normal Arius because he's not really in control of himself. He's kind of... He's still aware of his senses, at least according to the description in-game. But he is slowly losing himself to madness. So we know he's he just kind of like goes berserk at times. But he also has like uh, he has like spikes that he can shoot out of the ground that'll uh, come towards your body. He has basically King. He, he literally has um, you know the projectiles that King Cerberus uses, like the tracking lightning clouds. Those were stolen from his series. He literally has the exact same clouds, except he can shoot a million more of them. And, and they're they actually them. better, because not only can they travel through the ground and actually go through objects... I think they can curve and come back. Yeah, they can actually track you. Yeah, they can they can track you and, and do 180s. He also has multiple, like, laser, chest beam lasers that he can shoot and spin around like, like a crazy, like, you know, laser circus. Um... Then he's also got the extra appendages and arms which he can shoot into the ground to immediately grab you and hold you to the spot while he's zoning you and camping you. Um, so that being said, Artemis gets sweeped. Because um, he has basically all of Artemis' abilities, which oh, is better. better. Yeah, and, and there's nothing... He can, he can also just pull his arms into the ground, reach them up to the spot right below where uh, she is, and just drag her down to the ground. And just shoot it to death. Yeah, because he can. Yeah, he can literally just move. Like he he has the best range of I want up of all the generals we just talked about. Oh yeah, um, Malphus. Do we even need to keep talking? That's just a free spot at this point. Yeah, every, I'll just say all the generals on your uh, Argosax side just get like a free win. All the Argosax <laughs> side. Yes. Uh, <laughs> It gets a little tricky. So he has all the same options. There's the fire, so it's like... I guess if Cerberus can hit him a couple of times, well, he can hit him. I guess that's where I'm going to ask another question that we probably should answer. Are we giving phase two? Uh, I think it's fair if we're going to give Argus X that. So then, so, so let, let's so say he, he beats phase he's one. On his last if he's on, like, his last stand, he'll transform into Arius Argus Axe. At which point, if that happens, he's bigger than King Cerberus, and he can shroud the entire area in poison. And according to the he's description here, him. it looks like he gets Argus Axe's will and probably would have at least some of his abilities, which would just make him even worse to deal with. Yep. And um, I know he has acid in this form, at least, so he can't burn you. If if that if, if I need to add more, like shit. 
Well, let's be clear. I think if he survives the fire, he'll be able to do well. Even possessed Arius will do well in the, the second phase. I just think once he gets to the third phase, he's going to get frozen. He's going to get spammed repeatedly. I think at that point, you could argue King Servers could beat him. It's just, I think he's just going to transform in the third phase. And then it's going to be over for him. Yeah, because the second the transformation kicks in, it's there's no there's no coming back. Yeah, so the third phase happens, and he'll just like flood the area with poison. Even if he gets frozen, it doesn't matter. The poison doesn't go away. So King Service will just slowly get like weaker and weaker and weaker. Not exactly um, a good outcome for King Service. Now on to uh, Cavalier in the Garion. Um, so. If anyone's read Visions of V, they know that Garion has a weakness to getting his legs cut off. So, enter a guy that can stick his hands in the ground and grab your legs. I think you know where I'm going with this. Um, he could just grab Garion's legs and then shoot him with a bunch of lightning blasts. Now, he could, like, jump potentially, but you know... The way that Garion does do his jumps typically is running. So on instinct, the first thing he's got to do is jump. He can teleport out, yeah, by displacing himself with time. But like the first instinct that Garion's going to do, the first thing he's going to try is to move his legs to jump. And once he realizes that doesn't work, Arius is just going to keep shooting him. Because Arius, possessed Arius in this case, still has a little bit of his sanity. So he'd still have his intelligence. Even if he's, like, going berserk to a degree. Yeah, that would be second not, stage where his intelligence would be gone. Yeah, like, he's in the process of losing his sanity, but he hasn't lost it completely. Even if he had a fraction of his intelligence, Arius is an insanely intelligent person. So even, like, a fraction of that would still be, like, combat applicable. He'd still be intelligent than the vast majority of demons. Even the greater ones. So he'll be able to pretty easily and pretty handily, like, grab Garion's legs... And just shoot the stupid doom lasers and the uh, basically the tracking projectiles. I I think this is just going to come down to um, Cavalier just dismounting the um, basically dismounting the uh, fucking the fucking Gerian. You know, well, that's also that's also without mentioning he should be unaffected by like that time manipulation because. Uh, well, I was going to say if if at that point I'm going to be honest, I don't see Cav I don't think Cavalier has any options on the ground against uh, against Argo against fucking up. Uh, Come on, he's supposed to be the advocate for Cavalier, and he's their best one. <laughs> Dude, oh, okay, so here's the fucking problem. All he has is a fucking sword and no honest attacks. All fucking Arius has to do is stab himself into the ground or stab his arms into the ground and just grab his fucking legs. And there, you've basically nagged most of Cavalier's close range options. Oh, what's that? His shield's gonna protect him? Doesn't protect him from attacks below him. Or behind him. Or anywhere around him because this is really. <laughs> and keep in mind that his, his lightning blasts do go through objects, so you can just argue they'll go through the fucking shield. Well. I could probably just argue he could grab his legs with the hands, because, like, it's not like Arius, only for gameplay purposes, is he stuck to the spot. What he could do, he could literally just, like, shoot some projectiles to wall him down, jump behind him, and then pull the leg, uh, pull it, pull his arms into the ground, and then just, like, then use, while he's using his appendages to hold him in place shoot a laser out of his chest and blast Cavalier in the back. Oh, yeah, and then there's, yeah, there's the also front. the fucking giant blasting. laser attack. I actually completely forgot about that. He's got a giant fucking death ray on his fucking hands. Yup. Um, and then, you know, if it somehow gets, like, worse than that, and you just transform and then, like, lay waste to the entire area with poison. I don't know what The saying. Mayuri <laughs> approach. It, it, it's really just... There's just not... The, Ironically enough, when it comes to the generals, these guys are way more dangerous than the ones we dealt with before with DMC One's crew. Yeah, like I think the only one that's really like comparable is probably, um, honestly, just Nello Angelo. But that's just because summon swords are broken. <laughs> uh, so again, another sweep. Unfortunate. Unfortunately, Yurizen's forces just don't have answers, or at least they don't. Right. They don't show good answers to any of this. I think. <laughs> I think uh I think Tri's Magica might might level it out a little bit. So Tri's Magica um mainly 
his main approach to combat is like spamming magic through like the three heads. Yes. But he can't visually uh, fuse into one form. Now keep in mind, two of those heads are completely invulnerable to damage because only one of them is real at any given time. So yes. So <laughs> ideal. I think I think there's a possibility that you can make an argument that. Well, actually, he says. Wait! 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 Keep in mind, he's going to be fighting as a zoner who literally has two other forms that can close in on you that you can't hurt. Wait. So, I guess, I guess this kind of depends. If we're using, like, the average boss arena in 5... Well, we Tri can't, because Trismagia BFRs you into his own realm. Oh, never mind, then. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, if, they're, if we're arguing they're trapped on the stage... They're uh, gonna get fucked. fucked. I was gonna say, if we're using the DMC Five Arena, at least they have the chance. Like Artemis, you can make an argument for Artemis winning because she just dodge and zone, and at least until she decides to dive bomb, and then she gets just she, she just gets roasted by the fire. You can still or kind of argue that Artemis, even in the original arena, could like fly around. That's fair because I know someone's gonna bring it up. Well, Artemis can still I, fly around. I completely there. forgot about the fact that he BFRs you at he the He BFRs very everyone into that arena, and, so and that is completely like, fair to give him that. I'm to my home. <laughs> <laughs> and then he he can also fuse into that triple the, the triple like which the actual just launches a form. massive nuclear fucking strike on the area yeah and he he can control all the elemental forms and of that. these abilities are not one at a time like if you like he can do them at any time if you play on hard difficulties these things are gonna be mixing together left and fucking right oh yeah like <laughs> let's be honest the only reason it's not like more of a pain in the ass is because Dante hasn't been given like a full kit so the, so the bosses also don't get to have additional mechanics in that game from a gameplay perspective. They could have actually been way more dangerous than they're presented to be in DMC2. We're just seeing like the bare minimum of what they have to offer because that game is a very limited combat system. <laughs> um, so, uh, so, okay, so let's get, let, let's get this out of the way right now. Um, <laughs> So Malphus loses, of course. No, no, one, no one was holding their breath there. Uh, right, she does everything she does, but better. Fucking uh, Malphus loses. Artemis has the best chance, but again, as I mentioned, we're talking about a character who can unironically appear, like exist in multiple areas, and only one of them is an actual like hittable object. And you're gonna have to try and figure out which one's the hittable object. This is going to be diff difficult for a couple of these guys because Artemis especially doesn't have like a significantly high amount of intelligence. Yeah, and then on top of that, so so Artemis potentially Artemis has the best chance of of the lot. To be fair, I'm, I'm going to be generous here. They do potentially have the best chance. Doesn't mean they're going to have a like a chance, but they do have the best chance of uh, being 100% non fallacious. Oh. I would say King Cerberus is where it gets a little interesting because both enemies have access to the same type of abilities, but they can only use them one at a time. So the fire attacks, if I'm not mistaken, are typically the ones that start the fight. So for every, I'd say every third attack is going to do nothing to King Cerberus, but that's, then like every fair. other thing is going is so, to keep like, causing problems. Every third attack is going to do nothing to King Cerberus. Okay, every. Two attacks is going to do nothing to Transmagia. <laughs> Be so, I was going to say, like, the problem is is that he's just constantly basically moving his body out and phasing out. And uh, he can so, send in the clones or the ones that aren't real to do the damage for him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's also worth noting that if he's BFRing you, he can control the arena size, so he can just make an arena just big enough to contain King Cerberus, where he's literally a massive hitbox that has nowhere to dodge. You, you, remember, you remember when you said five minutes ago that Trismagia was going to even it up? <laughs> yeah. That's because he was gonna, he could... <laughs> he's going to even it up to a clean 4-0! <laughs> I thought he was just going to stand and he was just like, I forgot he could be a far. And I didn't want to include the phasing thing. I was like, oh, that's probably a gameplay mechanic. But then I'm like, oh, wait. That's the only way he's actually pursued in the boss fight. Fuck. Uh, so, do, 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 we, do we have to talk about Cavalier? Or do you, or would, do you just want to uh, concede that Cavalier, one? Cavalier, <laughs> basically, the only way Cavalier wins is if we, we basically... Remove the BFR? No, no, we, we either remove the BFR or we have a player 
plug a controller into his ass <laughs> and have him like spam teleporting like just repeatedly until he gets an opportunity to hit tries magica and then he just has to avoid the nuke and maybe like like if cavalier plays like this is the the hardest fight in his life and plays it super tactically there's a chance he could win there's a chance he could win. So I think nine out. I think nine out of ten times here we can just do the Tresmogia then. <sighs> oh, fuck whatever. All right. So uh, now, now that you're done eating your words, what is the final score? Oh my <laughs> goodness, that is a cl- that. You know what? Let's revisit Balrog versus Cavalier for a minute. Let's revisit that. All right. So. <laughs> You want to move on to Argus X versus Chaos? Oh, that's... Oh, Balrog. See, the only one that wasn't in the game, letting us down. <laughs> All right, so um, we do need to clear something up right now for the uh, for the viewers. Because some of you are aware of this, but uh, some of you are not. Um, so you are... I'm sure many of you are aware that Argus X has the powers of many different demons in DMC2. As he shows them, he shows the powers of various bosses. He's basically like... The substitution for the the generic the boss, boss in this, yeah. Uh, so in the Japanese version of the uh, game, the Japanese text actually uh, even from the um, even from the DMC wikis description, this is what it actually says about his abilities. Overlord of Chaos at one at one time held in his hands many most of the demon world and subdued many demons, but defeated by Sparta was waiting for the time of resurrection. Possesses both forms and abilities of every demon. Just to clarify here for a minute, this is for Argosax, uh, not specifically Despair, but it would just scale over. But this is for the first form, not even the second. Yeah, so so keep in... The, the second form has even more stupid shit. Uh, <laughs> keep in mind, I put this into this machine, like, into a machine translation with the Deep L translator. This is what it says. At one point, he was the king of chaos who surrendered many demons with most of the Makai in his hands. He was defeated by... Spada, which is supposed to be Sparta. I waited for the time of resurrection. It has the appearance and ability of all demons. Now, when it says all demons, keep in mind, this does not mean all demons that are currently alive. Uh, it has powers and abilities of Griffin and Phantom. And at this point, this is the demon that has access like scales to and above the current demon kings for beyond linear time. So, it has powers and abilities of every demon throughout yeah. all of time so, uh, and that includes the beast heads which means it would have the abilities and powers of every single demon from every single timeline that is dead or alive oh, so we're, we're talking about a demon that is effectively a composite of a composite so of a composite. Just, <laughs> yeah so, so for what what this means argosax would have access to all of mundus's powers he would have access to all of Abigail's powers. He would have access to all of Urizen's powers. All of the powers of Dante and Virgil, because they're also their true forms, are also demons. Nero's powers, Trish's powers, Lucia's powers, Sparta's powers. All the powers of all the major generals and demons throughout all the series. And then all minor demons that you know of in the series. Uh, so are, are, are you sure you didn't miss a few fucking demons, Mangler? Oh. I, I don't know if you're done mentioning the entire series yet. So, I just want to be clear. That's just the first phase. Despair Embodied has all of that. And, and if, 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 if Zem wants to go in there and check the actual descriptions that I posted, the 3142 art book actually confirms... He's meant to be a perfect everlasting energy uh, yes. being, and he is blazing with endless energy. Yes. So he is infinite stamina and basically an infinite number of different abilities and powers. Have fun. <laughs> so I want to be clear. The only reason Dante in the actual lore managed to kill him was because of an AP stomp in an invulnerable form via Majin form. If you actually watch Trinity of Fates... That's actually the reason actually, he's able on. to beat uh, them. You know what? Uh, where do you have that? Yeah, do you have that? Let, let's show. Let's I show do. That. Uh, so let's I let's do. show that because I, I won't. Yeah, see that. I'll 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 put that in there. Hang on. So uh, I do want to clarify as well while anglers are talking about this. Um, I did talk to uh someone we know uh who's very uh, picky on his translations. He did state that based on what his translator said, 
the context for the every demons is every demon in DMC two. But then Griffin happened, and Griffin is nowhere in DMC two, which means that Argosax can pluck things through time and see things through time, like Phantom got plucked. Keep it, keep in mind he already pulls Phantom into the future, and Phantom's been dead for six years. Oh, hang on. so it wouldn't it would matter if this if this means if this literally said every single demon in the DMC two game and just there, that wouldn't matter because he literally has the powers of. Demons that aren't even in the game. Uh, where did where did you right, uh, the, how, how did you link yeah. this? Because the video's not working. How did you how did you link this? Just, just click it. Well, no, I'm I'm clicking it, but it says zero seconds, and like I can I can only show them what's on Discord, so it's like oh no. Just 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 at just like at the actual video, and like I'll just like click I'll just go to the at. Wait, how do I how do I add it? Uh, okay, okay, go to the original video. Where did you where did you get this from? You got this from one of the the thing the server. The other media. Uh, okay, go ahead and go. Oh, can you edit on top of it to like just like at me, and then I'll just go to the app, and it'll just take me immediately there. Or I just edit message. Yeah, go go to the thing and just edit the message on it, and it should like give you the option to add. To like at me. Yes, there we go. All right, so let me see here. I got a new mention, I think from Kyle on voice chat text. Uh, did you at, where was that I said? I don't see any notification. Go to DMC other media. All right. <laughs> scroll up a little bit. All right, that's fine. Yeah, scroll past the... Um... Look at all these art book scans. Oh boy, look at us hard at work. You just type in Majin form and it'll go there. Okay, so this is weird. Uh, why is this not a? Uh... It's not working here either. Oh, okay. So I guess I got. Okay, hang on. Let me. Let... I'm gonna have to do. Some... I'm gonna do some magic here real quickly because otherwise it's just gonna be a pain in my ass. One second, Boy. guys. I, I'm. I'm gonna do some actual work in this video just to show you guys this because this. This was one of the coolest things I've seen in a while for DMC. So let me window capture this. Eh, pain in my ass. Uh, where is it? Is that it? There it is. All right. So this is this is what uh, this is what Trinity of Fates apparently reveals for. Now keep in mind this we didn't catch all of the fight, but basically the fight starts with them like exchanging a couple blows, and then Argosax in his despair and body form stabs him one time. This is after the stab. Yeah, so this is actually why the, this actually explains the cutscene a lot better. So this perfectly segues into the cutscene. So Argos X took a blow from Majin Form Dante, but that's what ultimately like killed him. And that's Majin Form's strongest attack. Yes. It's also confirmed that Majin Form is completely invincible. So he's fighting a form that is effectively immortal and invulnerable and can't do anything to it. It also scales way higher than him in speed and AP. So the only reason Dante is able to kill him is not because of abilities or tactics. It's because he just flat stat stomped him and was completely immortal. So now that we kind of covered that one, you're probably thinking to yourselves at this point, so yours and just loses, right? <laughs> well, so basically I want you to imagine every single tactic that Mundus could do that made him win under a zoning condition. Now imagine that Argosax has none of the weaknesses and can win every single close quarter CQC fight. <laughs> and like literally the amount of ways that we can argue that he could win is is so so I, I just say this because th this is a fun example to use. So he would have all of Mundus's abilities, right? So he could literally clone himself and create one of them that uses the plasmids abilities or like shadows abilities and have a bunch of his clones beat the living shit out of a weaker clone of himself to make it immune to all the abilities that it sees and have that clone have those clones use Urizen's powers until he sufficiently has it beat the crap out of it to where it's combat applicable heal it send it back to the battlefield and have it fight Urizen and have it be completely unaffected by all of Urizen's powers he could actually do that mid-battle, or could just BFR it to another dimension where Yurizen can't affect it, because Yurizen has to deal with the actual despair and body. Keep in mind, he has infinite energy, so he could summon as many of these clones as he wants. They're all as strong as he is, 
He also has the doppelganger's powers, so he can make them invincible if he wants to, too. Well, he can also, uh, <laughs> in-game, you also see um, he makes himself invincible to ranged attacks. Like, if you spam ranged attacks on Argos attacks, they just stop working after a few minutes. Oh, yeah, he, he will literally just become immune to firearms. It's like, fuck you. <laughs> stop that. So, after a period of time, he could just decide, like, I don't want to be affected by your, by your weapons anymore. Um... He could also use all of like he could literally cancel out or mimic all of the powers that he could uh, that like Urizen could use. So like even if Urizen's like using Time Stop for some reason, not that they would really work on Argus X, he could just use his own. He could just recancel it. Um, what? Not doing. <laughs> like, huh? What else the he base. could use? Um, I mean. Technically, all he would have to do is, like, zone... E even if we give Yuriz in the armor, the problem is, is that he has the powers and abilities of every demon, so he would have every durability, negation ability in the series, and every ability that can do, like, pinpoint precise accuracy. So he could just shoot the pieces of the armor or summon a bunch of clones that could then just spam and bum rush Yuriz in until he finds an opening in there, or an opening in the barrier. He could also just have a clone, like, even though we've mentioned that, yeah, like, BFR doesn't work that well on the crystal, when you can clone yourself 50 times, you can just have the clones keep BFRing the crystal as soon as it keeps spawning, so Yurizen will literally have entire gaps of time where he's constantly trying to bring the crystal back to defend him, and the clones just keep BFRing it. <laughs> so they could just keep doing that over and over and over again. Argus actually just sit over here doing, like, a siesta. Now... now Oh, yeah. You might you might be wondering, well, what if we use the blob form? Uh, so, as Dante demonstrated, even if you beat the blob form, it just transforms into this barren body. So, and like, even being in the blob form is technically unlikely because, again, what we do see the demons he uses in the game, canonically, he can have anyone on accurate. there. Yeah, what's he more could only summon Moondis on there, and it would still be valid. <laughs> um. Yeah. So. Essentially, any single combination of powers or abilities that you could see, he would have all of Dante and Virgil's abilities, so every ability that he sees yours in do, he could also do. Um, it, it, it's, really just, it's really just not fair. Like, now, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to answer this right now. Technically, you can argue Mundus also has all the powers and abilities of demons, but Argosax has the more blatant statements, so that's why we're like being a lot more like open about Argosax doing this crazy Mundus, shit. Mundus only got it because he declared himself the Emperor of the Demon World, and when he declared that and added an extension to his name, he gained all the dark powers of the Demon World. Um, but that was only during his prime. Argosax still has them during the events of 2. Argosax is there like, yeah, I'm, I'm composite DMC, what of it? He's also kind of in the process of becoming, well he's stated to be a perfect everlasting being. But he's, he's basically very trying to become like... A perfect human. Yeah. That's why his form becomes humanoid. So depending on how much time we give him in the fight, he might actually become human, and then be, and then at that point he will gain human blood, and he was, he's now unstoppable because he will have an exponential source of increase in power in addition to infinite energy and all the powers and abilities of every single being. It also should be worth knowing that, like, co completely unrelated to the outcome of this fight, which is already just a pure... Ironically enough, I think Argosax might have the cleanest stomp this entire fra this entire series is going to have. I don't think we're going to get better than this. He's literally almost... All of his generals cleaned up shop really well, and there's no chance in an equalized fight Urizen's going to even touch Argosax legitimately. I don't think, like... I don't think, like... <laughs> I was expecting the generals to sweep as easily. Like, the generals represented for sure. <laughs> um, My boy picks yeah, the finest. I'm going to be honest. Argo Sax, if not for the stats difference, Argo Sax is effectively the most dangerous character in DMC. If he's an equalized scenario, he will win every single fight, hands down. Yeah, because again, like, we only, the only reason Dante won was because Majin form. At least according to the Pinnacle of Combat, or well, not Pinnacle of Combat, it's called, um, what's it called? Duel of, uh, Trinity of Fates. Trinity of Fates. The Trinity of Fates DVD uh, book, basically. Yeah, so uh, just complete stomp all across the board. Uh, I know people were really looking forward to this when they were asking for it. Uh, it's not going to be anywhere near as long as Mundus is because there's not that much to talk about. Yeah, M <laughs> Mundus has the best interaction. Um, <laughs> So uh, other than that, I'd say Argus X wins. Uh, I I look forward to doing the next one, which n next we will be going over the human world factions, starting with the Order of the Sword. Yes.
which will hopefully be a little more fair than what will happen. It will definitely be. We'll also we'll also be able to include lesser demons for that because the order actually has enough demons that they made and created and are at their disposal. We will have a full fight for that one. If, much, if much by fun. any chance anyone want, like, just, just like, if you're curious about the Meyer Demons thing and you guys want to see that, we can do, like, just a separate video of DMC2's Meyer Demons versus DMC5 if we're, like, if that, like, gets requested enough. Yeah, we will care. Yeah, so, with that said, <laughs> Mangler, it's only, it's only an hour and nine minutes. This is the shortest, this is going to be the shortest version of this kind of video, isn't it? That's fine. <laughs> All right, so with that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys for your time as always. Have a nice day, and uh, uh, I guess we'll see you guys for our next video, and I'll see you guys on the next streamer video. Take care, everybody.